The next piece um, is, it's attributed, right? So this is a piece that's attributed to Juan Rodriguez Juarez. Um, I'm going to give you a bibliography, but I would say the queen of Casta paintings is Ilona Katsu. Uh, she's a curator at LACMA, so the LA County Museum of Art. She's like, like one of the top experts, and she has a couple of books on Casta paintings. Um, and I just I checked out one of them, um, and I just brought it in case anybody wanted to see it. Yeah. Oh, Ilona. Ilona, I-L-O-N-A, and her la last name is Katsu, so it's spelled K-A-T-Z-E-W, and she's, she's like, she's the curator of uh, colonial art at LACMA. Will that be on your bibliography? Yeah. Oh, Katsu will yeah. be on the bibliography, yes. No, like I said, she is like, like the person to read, um, if you're interested in Costa paintings. Um... I think I have terms on the next one. There we go. So related terms. Casta painting or pinturas de casta, mestizo, criollo, or creole, and huipil. These are terms that I'll be throwing out, so it's just so that you know what I'm talking about. So casta paintings are kind of fascinating. I think they're so fascinating. Um, they construct racial identity. Right, it's a, it's very much a, a pictorial or a, or a visual representation of the process of racial mixing that we'll encounter in the Americas. Um, they're predominant, usually discussed, of in Mexico or New Spain, and they'll be three races that are being represented in them, always. Can you guess what the three are? Spaniard. Sp or Spaniard or European, but it's usually Spaniard, yes. Indigenous. Indigenous. Is that Creole? And they're mixed. The three main races, though. And, African, African. and the slaves, the African slaves, right? So we'll have three, three races that will be mixed throughout them in order to come up with the different mixtures, right? And so they become about classification and there's this curiosity about difference, right? There's kind of an obsession with taxonomy and identifying um, particulars of not just people, humans, but also vegetation and animals, right? And this is something that is not unique to the conquest. It'll occur right before. I mean, we'll see this back during the medieval period as well. But during the colonial period, it becomes extremely fascinating to Europeans because they're encountering things that they hadn't seen before. And so the Gastas will, in a strange way, be kind of a visual indexing of the Americas. And they're going to, they always go in an order of progression, of mixing. There are usually 16 of them. So we'll have 16. They usually are separate canvases, as we see here. Either we'll either have copper plate or fabric, canvas, or linen. And like I said, they're usually depicted, uh, each mix will be a single standing object. At times, it'll be a larger one that's been subdivided. And I threw one in just so that you can see. So this one would be a single one that's just been broken up into little compartments. Can I have a question? Sure. So this idea about Europeans taking foreign objects, would we describe this to our students maybe as the same idea that you were saying before with the codex, how they take a foreign object and maybe that's why they're um, they want to do this because I had a student being like, well, why would they want if they were so racist? Because I was 
doing this racist talk that we talked about mm -hmm. last time? Why would they even want to be connected to them? And I was like, well, maybe because they're she's part of like a the rich. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that. Yes, but yes, yes. Is it also yeah, the part first of the one. idea of taking something for? I mean, well, so it's like I guess ownership is what you mean by taking. Exactly. Um, yes, and I'll actually. I think if you give me a minute, I think I'll actually address your question. Okay. Um, so, because there, it, it, it's really complex, and I kind of want to talk about it, and then you let me know if I answered it. Okay. So the first image is always. The Spaniard, and it's usually it's I've only I've only seen it as a man. I'm I'm not Katsu, so she might have seen something different. But it's always a man, a white Spaniard man, dressed in European garb, and his spouse is an indigenous woman. But she's not just any indigenous woman, is she? She's she's, the she's royalty, right? So he's connecting with a royal. And we see it in her attire. So she's wearing the huipil, which is one of the keywords. And this is just like the, what, just the general term used for like the indigenous clothing. But the huipil is gonna become a really important marker of her social standing, right? It's a very beautiful, very rich outfit that we're seeing on her and on him too. His is very much of a French style, right? He's using a powdered wig, which, I mean, if you've been to Mexico, <laughs> I don't think his clothing was all that fun to wear. Unless it's maybe like cold. Right? Um, so we see him wearing a powdered wig and his red coat, lace, mm -hmm. lace sleeves, but also that, that neck object um, so another thing is I said we see a racial progression it's also we're seeing almost a class progression and the gastas always depict the combination of a male and a female from different races and what their offspring will look like it's usually one or two children in this case one child and the other child, the other kid is probably a servant. Maria, would you just talk about the two children for a second, or are you going to? I'm, I'll talk about. Yeah, I'm just. I, I'm just trying to keep like an order of things. But if you, if you want to look at her features, she certainly doesn't appear to be particularly naked. No, she's a European woman who's just been painted darker. Right? I mean, if you look at her, that's what the, yeah, right? That's what the artist is kind of depicting. And what's really interesting about these objects is that um, they all look alike. They're very similar. They follow a type. Mm -hmm. And it's because a lot of artists worked out of, worked from apprenticeships, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd work under a master. So they very much at this time, there's no art academy yet in Spain, in New Spain, so they're following very much a guild system. So you become an apprentice under a master. At first you don't get paid, right? You're just there for room and board. Then you move up within the workshop, and then you finally get paid. And then when you become very good, you usually start your, up your own workshop. Um, so what's interesting is that if we were to look at these in person, sometimes um, the quality kind of changes within an entire series because we'll have a workshop mm. working on them and then a master will come to fix it. So it's, I mean, we, you probably talk about this when you talk about medieval art, right? At some points, maybe even some Renaissance people, mm. right? So the, the workshops are really important. And so right now, these are, these are apprenticeships. So we'll see that the clothing on the first two is always kind of similar. <laughs> And the progressions are really similar. Um, there'll be different artists that'll become more famous um, than others. This one's an attribution. The, the background in this one's fairly simple. In some of them, they become very elaborate in that we'll see um, a cityscape behind them or a domestic ex exterior. And that will always connect to their social class, their social standing. 
I wondered if your students when they look at this notice darkness to light, mm -hmm. that the light is behind the, oh, the European. What's no. the writing on top? Is that, that is, so there will always be text on these and it will always tell you the mixture and the outcome. Mm -hmm. So in this one, Right, so this obsession with taxonomy and classifying, we're actually seeing it on the object itself. Right, so it says of Spaniard and Indian Produce. produces a mestizo. So it's actually telling you what exactly it is. The function itself, the social function of these pieces is not very clear. Um, a lot of scholars have tried speculating, right, theorizing, hypothesizing what it's for. Some people have said that it tended, that they tended to be produced and collected by Europeans, usually um, high-ranking officials who commissioned these on their way back. But that's kind of been discredited because a lot of them have been found in the Americas. Some people say, have, have said that um, they were perhaps used in churches when people were, right after you get um, baptized and uh, inscribed, to like identify the different racial mixings. So to like be able to distinguish like what a white and a Creole because as you get mixed, your, your standing goes further down, right? It's, it's a caste, it's a casta, right? So we have these social classes are very much connected to, to your race. But that's also been discredited because not a lot, they actually haven't found collections of these in churches. Mm -hmm. And so there's no real clear understanding why these exist. Um, 18th century history of Mexico just general history and art history is kind of spotty at the moment. So there are scholars, I think Katsu is one, of, is like one of the best ones right now, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, like I said, um, they usually come from um, workshops. Um, let me see if there's anything else that I wanna say. Um, Oh, what's interesting is that as in Europe, there was a hierarchy of subject, of subject matter, right? And some pieces, some subject matter itself, or some genres, um, were deemed uh, appropriate and inappropriate for um, different types of artists. So if you were like a workshop leader, you could create um, religious imagery. But if you weren't, then you should just be painting something such as uh, landscapes or other secular material. And so some people think that these became popular among painters because they are secular material and so they could paint them. One thing that I do want to point out is that they're secular, but it's interesting how it makes reference to Christianity and Catholicism in that it's a family unit. Right, so Joseph, Mary, and the baby. Both babies, John the Baptist and Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, right? So it's interesting in that it's secular, but it still kind of makes references to Christianity or Catholicism specifically during, during um, uh, this period. Let me see what else I might want to say. Is there anything? I mean, just feel free to come up with um, questions as I'm thinking about things that I might have forgotten. Well, I'm just curious about what would be the natural progression then of the next one in the series of 16. Or what, like the top three, would it be um, the idea of a European mixing with a mestizo or would it be Hold a European on. with the black? Because this one has, in a lot of the earlier... They don't, they're not even sure when these started. Um, they think 17th-ish century. Um, but a lot of the older ones, they can't find the whole sequence. They know they're incomplete, but they can't find the whole sequence. How is this? Do I just go? Where's the? Here we go. OK. So this is a Miguel Cabrera, so this is a lot later. But I want to show you how the first 
panel, right, is identical, basically. It's the same that we saw before. The background's a lot nicer, right? We see um, their textile merchants. So we see the textiles behind them. So it, let it lets us know what people did, what class they belong to. But we see the India in her really beautiful wipil, right? So we know that she's an aristocrat. And again, that ties back to this idea that I was saying. They're trying to look back in ancient Greece and Rome, but they're also looking at equivalents with Europe, so royalty, right? The Europeans had royalty, and so if you marry a ro an indigenous royal, it's kind of sort of an equivalent to European, right? So we have the first panel. The second panel would be the mestiza. It's almost like the little girl grew up. Right, so we have the mestiza, which is half, um, half white, half indigenous. So one thing that I will point out is that the terminology itself used for some of the mixtures isn't always the same. Sometimes it kind of changes, but the progression, the idea is, it's just the name used to, to identify, I guess, that outcome. It just sounds so weird when we're talking about this, right? It sounds so colonialist, so racist, right? There's this obsession with identifying. Um, so we have the mestiza and another Spaniard, we have a castiza, right? So we're starting to see this progression. Let me just, oops. Right, so we continue seeing the progression here. In this one, we see two children, which we haven't seen yet. But before you have the interracial marriage of the Negro. So we have la, la Negra, so the black woman, the mulata. What I want to point out is we start seeing vegetation in animals. We see that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these aren't dated, and scholars are able to figure out the dates because of the clothing. Mm -hmm. So they, they are dressed in clothing that would have been contemporaneous to the artists at that time. So that's how a lot of times they're able to date them. Oops, sorry, I keep going backwards. Okay, I actually had this one in my PowerPoint, but let's do this. I love this one because in some of them, they start identifying the objects. Oh. These would have been exotic rare objects for Europeans, right? So this idea of taxonomy goes into everything. And so they start to include objects, flora and fauna native to the country. That would have just been, Europeans would, have no, would not have known what they were. So the artists identify them. Uh -huh. and so you can see the text, right, on the fruit, the names of what the fruit would have been, would have been known like, n known by at that time. So I have did I did I answer your question? You did. You answered the one like the function. I, I guess that's what I was trying to figure out. What was the function? What was the purpose of making this? And now I kind of have this idea of like, well, I guess it's just a big racist family tree for them. I don't know. Kind of but, the genealogy. Yeah. yeah. But um, I guess like because I remember last time. Please correct me because it's been so long. Year and a half. Um, but <laughs> last time you were kind of like relating it to. How each panel almost makes it so worse for each of the kids. Every time they have it, <clears> it makes it worse and worse and worse because they can't marry. Am I right? This in some of them. Look at my notes from last. No, time. no, no, no. I and in some of them. In this one, let me see. So in this one, the progression isn't as marked. Well, here we go. Look at the poor people. Yeah. So do you? Did you see that? The, yes. Telling me this? Yeah. Yes, so I did say that there was I a progression. Just, I just don't see the point of making them if you marry like at all, because if you're dooming your kids to like your future generations, like why would you even want to? How is this like a good thing? Well, but if you're rich, you're not going to be in the low. If you're buying these, you're not going to be in a lower panel, are you? Right. Yeah, because this wasn't purchased or created by these people. It wasn't purchased or created by the people. It well, the artists made it, but I'm assuming. Not but this. so the weird thing is that we don't. We're not really even sure of exactly who the entire audience right, but was. Oh, okay. Um, and there are cheaper versions of these, like the one I showed that was a full panel. That would have been done by like a a lower ranking 
artists and would have probably been a cheaper piece. But, but the Miguel Cabrera ones, these are definitely like government officers. I mean, look at these. These are good. Yeah. I mean, would you raise that so we can see 15 and 16? Oh, sure. Please? So I have a question. <clears throat> sure. Were there rights and social privileges that became institutionalized based on this classification system, like oh. it was in the United States with interracial marriages among African Americans and, and European of descent? Here in America. So in yes, so there are classifications and rankings. So the the most the most socially economic mobile person would be a Spaniard, right. a European. So and there's a distinction when they say Spaniard and when they say Creole or Criollo, right? Do we know what the difference is? Yeah, Creole is a Spaniard, but he was born in Mexico. Yeah, born in, born in the Americas, right? So you're still European white, but you were born in the Americas. You can still hold fairly high-ranking offices, but because you're not considered fully European anymore, you're actually one step below. So there were, so when we talk about actually case systems, right? This, this is it. Mm -hmm. Even if you were born to two European parents? Well, you would only be a criollo if you were born to two European parents. Uh, okay. A mestizo would be the one. Right. Mixed, Mixed okay. right? So what do these mean, the 15 and 16? Of a mestizo and an Indian, the child is a coyote, and we see that they're so poor that the baby's butt is hanging out. His little butt is hanging out of the torn... Right, so we see, and in these, and in these, we see the progression. In some of them, we actually even see their behavior devolve. Mm -hmm. Like in some of them, we actually see physical violence. In these, in these, these are Miguel Cabrera. So these are like classier ones. But in some of them, you actually see um, the woman like beating her husband. So if you just go to Google at some point, only if she's, only if she's darker and he's lighter. Yes, and the one where the woman is beating her husband, yes, she is a, a darker woman who's beating her white husband. Yeah. But it's, it's it, and it, you know, the, these, they're kind of some very general standards, I guess, if you want to say standards or types. But like I said, not all of them will do like the behavior breakdown like some of them did. You know, your question about why would you have these done? It does seem as though you would have these done to place yourself uh, very specifically in a mm -hmm. in the most noble position you could possibly Hopefully, do that. I guess. I'm just wondering: is there anything we know about in um, the Western art collection that does the same thing exactly? Well, do these kind of remind you of something? Because when I see them, they remind me of a specific type of painting in Europe. Thinking of putting your like the patron putting himself. Not of the patron, but of the people, right? Because these are actually depicting people in their everyday life events. So how, how is that called? What is a genre, genre, genre painting, mm -hmm. right? And that was extremely popular with the Dutch. And it usually depicted the, it was usually uh, peasants. And, but very much like genre paintings, these kind of inhabit that strange space in that it's, kind of based on reality, but not quite, right? So there's a lot of imagination. But they kind of, they remind me a lot when I see them, they're similar, very similar to a genre painting in that it's like what their daily interactions would kind of look like. With so many of these, I often ask why it is that the College Board chose that particular one image to show us. Is there something about the one that we have in our list that we have to know that kind of stands above and apart from well, or something special? I wish College Board would tell us that. <laughs> um, and why one image and not just give you the whole set of 16 because that becomes kind of confusing, right? Because they are sets yeah. of 16. And um, that's why I wanted to bring in this page so that you could see what more of them look like. Because when I talk about one, it just is a lot better to be able to see reference references. Um, Miguel Cabrera is my favorite of them. I think his, his work is just so, it's just so beautiful. It's more complete, too. Like more, yeah. you know, 
background. Well, and this is a lot later. Um, I think, Miguel, by, by the time that Cabrera was painting, how old are these? Do they have the date? Um, artists had been asking for permission to establish an art academy. Um, it isn't established until after he dies, but they'd been meeting and trying to establish an academy. So they weren't, they were trying to meet, move beyond the guild system, which is what our artist would have been working under. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So those uh, Royal Academy of San Carlos won't open until 1783. And it's with, they keep asking the king for permission and it just keeps getting kicked back, rejected, 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 rejected. So we have the kids, we haven't talked about the kids. So we have the family unit, in this case it's uh, three, with a, a kid, with a little boy who looks like he might be the servant, like a servant, a uh, helper, um, a little indigenous boy. Um, and we see him carrying, carrying the baby. I don't know, what do you think about, about this uh, dynamic? Let me see if I have a full, let's do it. Why am I going back? It almost seems like she's presenting what she's made for her husband. It's strange. Well, but the virgin usually, when you look at religious imagery, the virgin's usually gesturing at the baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and but the but the the man is also tenderly. Yeah, caressing the baby's yeah. hand. Yeah, he's he's kind of a very sweet dad. Because mm -hmm. it seems like, from what you're saying, that he wouldn't necessarily like this. Wouldn't be something to be proud of. Well, but it it's a strange image in that. She is fairly his equivalent because she is aristocracy, right? She's a queen, or not necessarily queen, but probably like a, a princess or somebody very high ranking, right? So she would have been like if he married in Europe, like a, uh, I don't know, like a duchess or a, or a princess or something. What would he be? Just like, like I know he's prestigious because he has the attire, but like. He's probably some kind of government official. I mean, that's what you did mm -hmm. at first. And it's funny because in the Americas, well, in, I guess in New Mexico, New Mexico is pres a prestigious enough region that, 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 you would, that you would be okay with being sent there. But the Caribbean islands was where you would be sent if the king was annoyed with you. Because nothing was going on there. They're so small. The boats barely, the ships barely stopped by. Nothing was going on there. New Spain was the epicenter, the crossroads of the colonies. We had, we had um, exchanges between Europe, the Americas, and Asia all happening here. Okay. Right? Remember, the Philippines were a Spanish colony at this time. It's right? the year again. Right? At this time, the, what do you the mean crossroads the at... Which, where are we? What? 17, 17, 17 something. That's when it's the, the 18th process. century. Okay. Well, during the colonial period, while while Spain is is I guess the supreme leader of of the of the empires, right? Because then Spain, it'll be a downfall of Spain, and then England will rise. Which is funny because I was taught Spain is the empire where the sun never sets, and a lot of people are like, no, it's not. It's <laughs> England. And I'm like, eh, no, it's Spain, but we were a Spanish colony, so that's what we learned. And if you ask a Spaniard, they'll be like, England, ugh. <laughs> um, you know, back to the children and, and just the, the image and the gazes. Um, you know, she looks at him, the servant child looks up at him, he looks lovingly down at the baby, it appears, but the baby, is it just that it's a baby and so it's focusing on some little object, it's, but it's probably down. And, and well, the baby's kind of looking sort of at the boy, but it's so interesting how 
The iconography, the body language, is very much like a religious object. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what they're looking at as a model. Right? It would have been... Make this religious, that's just the only thing. Well, no, that would have been your point of reference. I mean, think about it. There are no museums here. There's nothing here to look at. What you're maybe looking at are religious prints. And that's going to be your model. You know, the child to me looks very like Duras. They're it, Germanic. It's a big headed kid, but <laughs> really. I mean, you look at some of his things, I wonder. Maybe there were some. They might have some. some well, sneak in. Yeah, reproductions. Native looks more white than indigenous. The what? The, the young boy. Yeah. Well, the, the, the features are going to be. The they're going to be basing them off of right. European models, and then they just oh, darken really. the skin. He looks just like the mom. Yeah. Actually. Who does? The, the, servant boy. the little right. servant boy. Like, almost like she could be does, but not his, his mom. Or his sister or something. Or something. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Maybe. Oh. So that's, I mean, he's... That's she's actually, like, that she would have more tied to... No, but he's probably sure not... He's probably style. not too low-ranking either if he's helping a wealthy family, right? Mm -hmm. So in this situation, is the son... Does the son have a higher ranking than his mother? Mm -hmm. Um, ooh. It'll probably be... Oh, that's a tough one because I'm not a colonialist. Um, it'll probably be sort of an equivalent one. I mean, it is, it, it's a son. Mm -hmm. It's a boy. Mm -hmm. Or would a castizo, which is the Espanol and mestizo mix, be higher ranking than the mestizo? Probably a castizo. It'll probably, yeah, so it's about percentages of white blood. Although it it makes a sense that you take the last word that produces a mestizo, and then you have espanol plus mestizo is this castizo, and then mm. espanol plus castiza. So it's kind of a, just a way to sort and help walk you through the mix logically the process. Mm -hmm. And I mean, anthropologists have pointed out there's so many more variations and possibilities. I mean, this is not truly scientific. <laughs> no. Right. This is just kind of a weird amateur way, I guess, of, of, of both science, I think. yeah, pseudoscience. pseudoscience, yeah. Is there any iconography in the hat, the particular way that she's wearing her headdress? Or well, she's wearing, so her whole outfit, which we'll see on the outfit she's wearing, we'll see very similar depictions in all the other um, women in the first one. That is, that is a, a noble weepy. Right, so she's wearing her indigenous attire, but that is letting us know that she's a, she's a very high-ranking, wealthy woman within the different I indigenous women. Right, so this is her, the embroidery, right, the richness of the design of her, the textile that she's wearing on her body and over her head, that wrapping and draping, mm -hmm. is a is a socioeconomic marker and a class marker for her. Anything else? Let me see if I have any other. So I threw this one in just as an example of a, of a single panel one. Um, and it was just to give you reference to it so that you, you see what's kind of out there because it's just, it's so strange to me, right? That you only have one object when these come in a series. And, and like I said, there's two different ones. And there's so many variations to them, right? We're just kind of going over mm -hmm. s s um, f fairly general ones. I didn't realize there were that many um, slaves brought from Africa mm -hmm. to Mexico. Yes, South America, Central maybe, South America, the islands, but not so much to New Spain. Uh, th I mean, there were, there were. I mean, there there are other countries that have much larger populations. So, Brazil, right, mm -hmm. would have been the biggest one. And Brazil also had the longest um, slave trade in the Americas. They were the last country to abolish slavery. Um, well, maybe it's because they didn't raise perhaps the same kind of crops that demanded 
slave labor. Sugar Do they do sugar and cotton and well, in, in Mexico, um, a lot of the indigenous people survived the, the conquest period. And so they were then enslaved. Mm -hmm. Whereas in some other countries, mm -hmm. so in the Caribbean, the populations were so small that they either were able to flee because of they were just able to roll away, um, or they were killed. And so there's a lot, there's the there's a lot slave... Like well, the Europeans thing. also brought all sorts of disease that well, killed off. Saying. Yeah. So disease, but abuse, like there, I mean, there's not a single reason. There were many, many, many. But I thought clearly a huge percentage of the population in Mexico died because of the aggression and because of illness, European illnesses like smallpox. So that there weren't that many that survived, but I guess there were. Well, the populations were that big. Oh. Wow. Let me see. Do I have anything else? Oh, and this is the one that I expanded for you for you to see how not only are they in some of them right to identify the people, but also the fruit, and and and, and it's it it varies by artists. Some of them don't identify them. This artist has written the name on the fruit. Some artists will have on the bottom of the painting just kind of basically a key to what the things are. So they, they change, but it's just really interesting to see this obsession with classifying, categorizing things. Yeah. Okay, so how do you answer a student that says, why are we looking at images of this? I find this as offensive as images of Piccaninny or Aunt Jemima or all of those other images that we've historically had really negative things for. You know, how do you answer a student when, when that comes out? Like when they're offended by this? It's, yeah. It's part I'm, of the history. I mean, um, so it is part of the history and we're not showing it to you on a face, uh, in the just the face value, right? It's like, oh, this is this is this is racist, and this is amazing. We're we're trying to break it down and try to understand colonial thinking. Mm -hmm. well, right. So that's a reflection of its time, and you have to establish yeah the context. This is what was happening at this moment. Um, I would love you to talk about that image just for a minute because I'm trying to understand who the man is. At first I thought it was a woman and then I saw the uniform yeah. and the black Which man. one? Yes. Oh, it's oh, the oh, Afri Afri Yeah, the African, but uh, what, what is the man. title? So it says, um, it says of African and Indian, uh, China Kambuha. I've never heard that term. But that's the term that they say the child will be. So the man is an African soldier. Isn't that a uniform? It is a uniform, and it's strange because he's wearing like such a rich yeah. outfit. Yeah. And and she's actually wearing a fairly nice outfit as well. It's not as nice as the first one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she's not she's not like the ones we saw that had like the torn, patched up clothing. Mm -hmm. But so it's these are interesting in that they're. Well, the fabrics are lovely. The fabric is Beautiful. pretty lovely. The food is I mean, the base and, and then the... Embroidery. Yeah. Really quick, going back to your question about how do you discuss this, I think that, because I, I have some students that were just like, what, this is crazy, but I think you can use that in saying, this is why we talk about it. We can't pretend that it didn't happen. It yeah. did happen. And it now did happen. we can analyze it and talk about it mm -hmm. and talk about that it is racist, but not talking about it, I think, further empowers it, I think. It's also strange because when you talk about race, I mean, racism still exists. Mm -hmm. And when we look at how it was being constructed, right, we can mm -hmm. see how it still trickled down to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's another yeah. way that you can talk about it, right? How, how, the, how things like this. I'm just curious about the embroidery. Was that <coughs> something that the Aztec did already or is that imported from Europe? No, she's wearing, she's, wearing in, she's wearing indigenous clothing. Oh, it is. so they did a lot of embroidery. Oh, so did you think about beautiful it? embroidery? Yes, yes, I yes, think yes. I that in Mexico, but I didn't. I haven't seen well, it. I didn't know that. Yes, yes. Wow. Do we have any indigenous clothing of that time period anywhere? 
in museums? In museums? I mean, you have, yeah, I mean, I think in your AP you even have like a head headdress mm. and yeah, we have we have some things. But the embroidery, do we have? From the embroidery? women? I think so. I think if we were to go to, if we decided we're going to go to Mexico on a field trip, we would find mm -hmm. textiles. Sure, that would be really cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I talk about Kahlo, I'll show some, uh, I'll show an example of a textile, but she's a lot later than this. A lot of contemporary indigenous. They still practice. Still, still, yeah, it's yeah. the same as it would have been 500, 600 years ago. Yeah, so if you actually were to go to like a, a museum shop, they'll, they'll show you a textile, and then they'll show you, they'll actually sell you a, a contemporary piece that is still being a lot of times loomed or embroidered by hand depending on how that piece of textile is made they're still being done today um, and a lot of times they're done by like women's collectives wow. which is really um, interesting just a theory um, <laughs> do you think like maybe with these with the marriages you see these families it's, it's back then the social you wanted to marry your own type of Hierarchy, I guess what I'm saying. Do you think it kind of helped people stay in their hierarchy so they wouldn't have to diminish? So that's one thing that people have thrown around is, oh, it's a way that you can Keep visually that. identify yeah, so like what a, a skin color or something like that would look like and not be like, well, they, you know, it's probably the sun, but oh no, they're mixed, you know, like. Yeah. And that's why some people were saying, well, that's probably being kept, um, some of these were probably kept in churches because that's where the records were. Um, and that's what, where you would actually go even look up the person you were interested to make sure they're from a certain lineage. But that's kind of been, I mean, none of these things have been proven. It's just, it's so far removed. And especially churches because of earthquakes and fires, like a lot of records disappear. There's just, it's just, there are just a lot of ideas that are being thrown around, and at this point, nobody quite knows because what the know whole purpose. During this time period, you would want to marry, so if you were royal, you'd want to marry somebody else was royal because it was about the blood. Oh, yeah, you want to marry, yeah. So do you think it would be kind of associated with this, like making sure that they stay in line of their... This is making sense what I'm trying to say. I can't even yeah, think very actually, well. With, with that, I'm wondering, because obviously, if they do mix, the way that the skin, the skin color is going to be different, right? Depending on their like, it's not always going to be. And that's why anthropologists the same. Yeah, that's why. So was it talked about? Was it like, oh, I'm I'm a mestizo? Like, were they using these words to identify themselves so that, well, like, kind of what she's asking, like, if you were interested in someone, you would find out if they were a mestizo or a Creole. Or so if you're interested in socioeconomic mobility, this is going to be something that's really important to you, right? You can't marry someone below you or beneath you because that'll trap you. You want to be marrying someone who's either your equivalent or above you. Right. But they would talk about, I mean, it was, I guess I'm wondering, was this language that they used? Um, some of the so some of the terminology is fairly standard. Some of it is kind of strange and kind of made up. Okay. The outcomes a lot of times you're like I've never heard this, um, and they're kind of just kind of making them up. But but the mixes and and the rankings and all those things are, are fairly standard. I don't know if, if that made sense. If so I answered. Some of these terms are still used in the Philippines. Some of these terms are still and still used everywhere in the Americas as well. Wow. Is it offensive to be called a mestizo today? Well, what's interesting is that um, no, unnecessarily. There's, there's a certain um, identity that I'll talk about when we start talking about the 20th century in Mexico, where a lot of the artists will embrace this mestizaje, this racial mixing, right? Because they consider themselves to be mixed. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting when I was looking at the mixed baby and I was like, oh, that's so interesting. But I don't think people were quite in the 18th century thinking about this pride of being mixed. The, the Creoles felt pride, right? And they're trying to uprise, but they're thinking about themselves. They're not thinking about anybody else because they're thinking, well, we're white. And why can't we have the same rights? 
So that's a different kind of identifier. But in the 20th century, we'll talk about these ideas of mestizaje and indigenismo, which are slightly, which are very different.